Excellencies, dear colleagues, dear guests, and of course, dear candidates, it's my great pleasure to welcome you today to this graduation ceremony of the Diplomatic Academy in this ceremonial hall of the University of Vienna. And personally, actually I'm overjoyed that we can do this again. We can meet again, we can talk to each other again, and we can celebrate together again. It's hot today. But it's a perfect day. It's the day of your graduation. It's a day of celebration. And we celebrate with you. And please, celebrate. Uh, the University of Vienna and the Diplomatic Academy have a long-standing collaboration. It's a fruitful collaboration. And with the MICE program, uh, we offer young persons from all over the world uh, a singular course of studies in the field, uh, with a curriculum covering a wide range of topics geared to enabling you for a career in international relations, but not only a career in international relations, a career of your choice. Now, more than ever, education in international relations is extremely important. We live in a world that seemed to have changed overnight. First, the pandemic hit, and the physical distances, which seem to have shrunk over the last several decades, again, were real distances. And after the then we hoped the pandemic would be over. Well, we all know it isn't. And then the war, on practically at our doorstep, shattered our certainties, certainties even more. The world is fragile, and we were reminded of its fragility the hard way during those last two years. And as a society and as, you, as humanity, we need individuals. We need individual human beings. We need individuals competent to deal with uh, the challenges, to deal with international relations, maybe more than ever. And you have learned the relevant competences during the course of your studies needed to work towards a peaceful world for all of us human beings. The collaboration between the Diplomatic Academy and the University of Vienna is long-standing and it's been strengthened and is further strengthened through recent uh, developments. Right now, we are preparing a call for a new joint professorship in, for European studies. It's a full professorship. The call is just in preparation. It's a joint call. And we also have the joint PhD program, Interdisciplinary International Studies. And today, the first person ha, to complete this PhD is among us. And let me tell you, I had to brush up my Latin for you. <laughs> It was a pleasure to do this. This fruitful collaboration is based on trust and it's oriented towards the future. And you, graduates, are part of this future. You are our ambassadors into the society. You are the future. And you came from all over the world to study at the Diplomatic Academy. I think you enrolled at the time when we all thought, well, <clears throat> it was in 2020, 
when it, we all thought, well, maybe the pandemic will not be so bad, it will be over soon. It isn't, it still isn't. You started your studies, presence learning, as we call it, and then everything had to move towards the internet and everything had to move towards uh, online again. And you call yourself Generation Zoom, I heard. That's an apt name, but I do hope you're n you d did not suffer too much from Zoom fatigue. And you're not as sick and tired of Zoom and video conferences as I am. <clears throat> but it's great that we had this opportunity. It's great that the digitization has come so far that we could switch from one day to the next from full presence to full online. The University of Vienna did this within two days. The whole University of Vienna and, uh, well, you're at the Diplomatic Academy, the University of Vienna has uh, 90,000 students and 10,000 personnel. And we made it within two days. So Zoom, well, we are not using Zoom, but it doesn't matter. Zoom is not all bad. And the generation Zoom learned one thing for the future. Those video conferences will not go away. But I hope you also had time to uh, experience what graduate school is all about. Of course, studying. But it's also about human exchange. Getting to know each other, hot discussions, maybe even verbal fights, good. Because if you care, then it sometimes gets heated. Spend time together, have fun together. I heard a bit about parties sometimes at the Diplomatic Academy. Uh, learn from each other be together and do something together and create something together. Today we celebrate the successful completions of your studies and yes, you all did well. You did very well. Studying, getting a master's degree or even a PhD degree is extremely hard work. It's hard work. It's not all about fun, it's work. You can be proud of yourselves. We are proud of you. Today is the completion of a chapter, but it's the start of maybe the start of a new chapter, but maybe the new chapter has already started. Now these fixed breakpoints. It all goes a bit together. Uh, you do not know where life will take you. No one knows that. When I graduated, got my PhD here at the University of Vienna, I'm not saying how many years ago. I didn't dream to dream or imagine that one day I would stand here as vice rector of this huge university. But as you, I learned what it takes to be, well, to have a career or whatever, to do what one does well. And the competences you learned here, of course, you amass a vast amount of knowledge from all over the field. But you also learn something that's extremely important wherever you are. You learn critical structured thinking. You learned how to get information quickly, sort information, look for evidence, and you learned basing your decisions on evidence, evidence-based decision-making. You learned understanding diversity. You learned to value diversity. And you learned the importance of human relations and international relations. It's one global world, we just have this one world. And you, the future, 
will go into this world. Maybe some of you already know where for the next couple of years. Some of you maybe don't know where, but be sure. What you learned here is what it takes to live in a global, diverse, international world and to do well. Again, we are proud of you. We wish you all the best for your, for your future, wherever you may be. And so, all the best. And now let us proceed with the program of this, uh, of this graduation ceremony, and then we will hand you your diplomas. All the best to all of you. Thank you. Madam Vice Rector, and if I may say, Madam Mother of a DA alumni. <laughs> uh, dear soon to be graduates of the Zoom generation, you called yourself Generation Zoom, but actually you're the Zoom generation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, families, friends, this is one of the great moments at the end of each academic year when I say welcome to you, to a big group of enthusiasts of international relations who worked hard for two years. Uh, and you will soon become graduates of our institution together with the University of Vienna. We appreciate much this cooperation. The University of Vienna is a bit older than the Diplomatic Academy. But there must be a good reason why there is a statue of our founder in your main ceremonial hall of Maria Theresia. Where is she? There. There. It's an honor and a great pleasure for me to welcome you all here as director of the Diplomatische Akademie, Vienna School of International Studies. This is a very special graduation ceremony, and it has already been mentioned. Uh, we open a new chapter in our long history. Today, we also celebrate the first graduate of the PhD program in interdisciplinary international studies. We started this endeavor with you, the University of Vienna, some years ago, having had that in mind for a long time. We are extremely proud of Karina Trestaro, who will receive the first PhD diploma from the DA in its almost 270 year long history. So you really made history. Thank you. <laughs> the, vice -rector, the vice rector said that this is a university of 90,000 students, huge intake. The Diplomatic Academy, as you know, is a institution of about 200 students. And I always have the feeling we are small enough that the director and the administration knows almost all about what you are doing during these two years, but it's big enough so the director doesn't know everything you are doing these three years. So this is an advantage for both sides, I would say, that you have. Um, a lot has been said already of what we'll expect you what we expect of you. Uh, we expect you to make decisions and defend decisions. That sounds very easy, but you will see, and you may be already during the thesis period, you experience that this may be difficult. And uh, I already had yesterday a graduation ceremony for our DLG course. And there I spoke actually only about one issue about taking courage. Be courageous enough. And this is also true for your future. Be courageous, take the courage. Because some of you may have heard the inauguration speech of Valentin Insko. 
I know that it was difficult because of Corona times, but maybe you saw it on the live stream. And he spoke about what a good diplomat should be. Diplomat meaning anybody who works in international relations. Uh, and he was not talking about theories, as our professors do abundantly, I have to say. Uh, he talked about the practical sides uh, of, of, of working and living in this international field. And he encouraged all of you <laughs> to take the courage to defend your positions even against your superiors, against your <laughs> adversaries, against everybody. And that's actually something that we need in our defense of liberal democracies worldwide. Don't accept that liberal democracies are on decline or on defense. It's you and us that have to do and prove that we are the better system than a system where we don't have the right to say what we want to say and we don't have the right to live the way we want to live. With all the, the, the mishaps of a liberal democracy, I guess in these two years we tried to instill you even further with the idea it's worth working for it and it's work, worth defending it in an active way. So have the courage to do this uh, and uh, not many of you will become diplomats, so I'm not afraid, but I uh, remember one of the big pieces of Austrian literature is called Sternstunden der Menschheit by Stefan Zweig. And he shows the decisive moments in history and the people who shaped the decisive moments in history. Uh, and you know what? There is not a single diplomat, not a single diplomat in the whole book. I was destroyed when I realized that. There are military leaders, politicians, inventors, even composers. So we have to prove that it's not true simply. A lot of the stereotypes about people working in the international field is simply not true. Uh, and they, at the graduation yesterday, one of your course speakers of the DLG uh, said, we promise that in the year we were here and in the future, we will never follow these false stereotypes of being stuffy uh, and being boring. Not a bad idea, actually, such a promise. Uh, I have no doubt that it's not in your mind to become stuffy or boring, but be courageous. That is something that is very important. Um, and uh, let me say, you are the champions of our school because you are this two-year program that uh, uh, we invest so, lot, so, so much of our also efforts. Uh, and uh, what I learned from my own times as a DA student uh, is if you want to be a champion, it's important immediately to act when there is adversity. Uh, and I have to say, I, I used to live in London for 10 years. So I'm not a fan of FC Liverpool, but rather of FC Chelsea, in spite of the ownership issues. Um, but I'm sure at least our, our UK soon-to-be graduates know what I'm talking about. FC Liverpool has a hymn, which was actually introduced only a few decades ago. And this hymn was not introduced because of a specific success in the system, but because of a catastrophe, of the Hillsbury catastrophe, which killed almost 100 people, I think, in 1989. And the title of this hymn is simply, You'll Never Walk Alone. And that's what we hope that you will do. You will stay in contact with all your colleagues here. You stay in contact with our people. You stay in contact with our alumni association. Please join it, yes, for those of you who didn't join it yet. Uh, it's worth it. Because it's all about you'll never walk alone. And not if there is sunshine like today, but if there is a real problem. Uh, and that's family, what we understand really as family. And again, we are small enough and old enough to understand how important this is to stay together. And especially if you're, if you're such a diverse group of people from all together in our alumni network, 120 countries and, and 
thousands of people of various ages, various backgrounds, just as you, just as you, 76 plus one today, uh, who, who finished the, the studies here. Uh, and I think maybe you can also accept the proposal that I have for you. It's not the proposal that you should uh, uh, be as active as possible and be, uh, be uh, a good citizen in these difficult times of diversity. Um, and it's not thanking you how much you all had to go through these two years um, and uh, how, how much we appreciate that with your help we came through this COVID period quite, quite safe. And that's, it may be the end of, of confinement, we don't know really. But uh, what I would propose is that maybe if that's possible, I don't know whether our statutes allow this, that you change your name, please, of your, of your, of your mice congratulations. I don't like Generation Zoom. You should remember Generation Good Luck. So I propose your Generation Good Luck. Good luck is ambivalent always. It means that let's hope something is all right, but we don't know about it. But when you consider to start your studies here at the Diplomatic Academy, for most of you, there was no idea of a pandemic, on the, not, not even on the horizon. Maybe some of you read it already uh, in reports from China. But then it came. And then we had to live with it. Uh, and now it looks as if we have good luck, hopefully. Uh, and this is just one of the issues that comes up. And the war in the Ukraine has already been mentioned. It's not far away from here. Uh, and uh, you have lived here for two years. You understand now how much Vienna uh, is a central European city where everything that happens in Europe, the good and the bad, resonates also. And where you have people here who have different opinions about things. I try to work a, a lot to keep the Austrians ready to support the Ukraine also by accepting that there are consequences, economic consequences. I'm not sure whether I will succeed, but I'm always looking for people who support me also in this. But you might also have the position, no, we have to take care of our own nation first and forget about other things. Vienna had never this idea. We were only successful here when we accepted that the plurality, the diversity that was mentioned uh, is something that helps you to find creative solutions, more creative solutions. We have all these contacts here, and some of you come from, from this area. We have a Slovene colleague here. We have, we have a Croatian, we have, a, we have a, uh, uh, also a, uh, someone from Ukraine here with us. So we have all the, we have Romania here, we have Central Europe here. Uh, so please keep that in mind, uh, that you started in a place where this was part and parcel of our life. And don't believe that this is true what some Austrians invented. I, it was either Alfred Bolger or, or Mr. Krauss, nobody really knows, or Mr. Watzlawick, when he said, we Austrians, we always say the situation is hopeless, but not serious. That's not working anymore. That's not working. Forget that, please. At least for the time being, the situation is serious, but not hopeless. That's, that's realism as I, as I see it now at the moment here. So really, there's a lot of chances and challenges for you and uh, uh, you learned all this time a lot about how to handle them. Also by all your extracurricular activities of which I was partly informed and partly kept, kept away from it. Uh, and I was only informed when the neighbors, the neighbors, informed me about how active and creative you can be out of class. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, as I said, I was also a student once here at the academy, so I know the place. Uh, and what's also good is that in these two years you were connecting with the real world a lot. The DA offers so many 
platform activities for international relations, bringing in people. Last big discussion was on recharging Austrian-US relations, but actually it's about European-US relations uh, with uh, a lot of people. And then we, we bring in, especially from the Balkans and from Central Europe, leading politicians. We had here with us the president of, of Kosovo, uh, the deputy, now, now prime minister uh, of, uh, of Montenegro. And we also had here the president of Slovenia. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Bar. <laughs> welcome to, to the ceremony. Uh, and you had the chance also to travel again. And that's, as we know, always one of these things you seem to like quite a lot, our two weeks long Balkan trip. And you were the, what did I call you? Good luck generation, which uh, had again the chance uh, to go on the Balkan strip. I joined you for a few days and I had the idea that you quite enjoyed it. That was good. Uh, and it's also something which we, which we see as our, our task to pass on to you, that the combination between the highest academic standards and having the chance to experience what it means in real life be it internships at IOs here in Vienna or somewhere else, or going on a study trip uh, to Brussels this year, after so, so many years without. We had the largest ever delegation to the Brussels trip, more than 120 people going to Brussels, and you were part of it. Some of you will go to Israel next week on a study trip with, with Professor Müller, whom you will hear uh, after me. So it's, it's back. I won't say back, back to normal because please don't, don't ever say we are back to normal or, uh, or, or, or something like that. Uh, use it also as a chance. Actually, when you look into the job market, your situation, if you start now, is better than for many years. We are looking for people. Actually, I have to say in Vienna, we are mainly looking now uh, for people for our restaurants and hotels, uh, but, but we are also looking for well-educated academics, and we are also looking for those who understand how to deal with, with the disruption that we have in this world. Uh, and so it's up to you. You have the chance now, and I wish you, I wish you really all the best for that. Uh, and I hope that you will succeed in all these endeavors. You have to I think the best perspectives and you could use for our career service a lot of the possibilities of speed dating and meeting uh, the, the human resources people of, of, of company corporations uh, and so on. Uh, and now it's the official end. We are soon to be graduates. Uh, and tomorrow I hope I see you at our famous Sommerfest already at the grounds of the DA. Uh, so far, I heard we have 800 people accepting our invitation, so it will be quite crowded. Um, let me finish with saying simply also thank you to those people who uh, helped you through all this. It's first of all the faculty. Demanding faculty which uh, thinks disciplines still count in academia. Although our founding idea is to work across the disciplines, but they do it. I'm making not fun of you, but I'm saying that oh, that's something special that you have to deal with more than your discipline. You have to look for these connections. Uh, and when we choose our new chairs, we always ask for this. And the last chair we, we had found was Professor Feldkircher. Uh, and maybe your students experienced both the old school of economics with Professor Neudeck, whom we loved dearly, and you will also, I guess, love dearly, and Professor Feldkircher now, the new school of economics that we have. So the faculty is an important part of, of, of these two years that you experience. But I would also like to thank certainly all the sponsors, all the help we get uh, from the officials, from the foreign ministry. Um, uh, it could be more, yeah, more support financially. <laughs> Um, uh, because we are so different from the University of Vienna, they got almost all of the money from public, from public money. Uh, we, we have to raise two-thirds of our bu budget uh, from study fees, uh, from sponsors, from friends, from scholarships. But I do know that there, there has to be a difference between your institution 
and our poor, small, not so old institution as the University of Vienna. But let me uh, also thank uh, your parents, your friends, my own administration for the hard work, Jenny Kiaraton, I think she's close to your heart now after these two years, uh, or not so close to your heart, it depends on, on <laughs> <laughs> how we managed to deal with all your issues that you had. Uh, altogether, I hope you had a really interesting, rewarding and enjoyable academic two years. Uh, we are proud of you, this diverse group of 77 talented and ambitious young people. Uh, and uh, I hope you will stay on in, in our community because, and I have to repeat what I said yesterday, because in the last few months, a lot of people might have told you and you might have also believed it, that diplomacy is failing at this very moment. And it may be the case. Diplomacy did, could not avoid the war that happened, the wars that happened. Diplomacy could not avoid the failed states we have uh, all around Europe and maybe partly also in Europe. But diplomacy never stops and that's the good thing about it. The, the work for, for, for a peaceful solution to international relations depends on finding in theory and practice the ways to find compromises and the ways to solve conflicts. And if one thing is sure, you always start with conflict. When I do my, my, my introduction to diplomacy, not so much to you, but on, on executive courses, I always say, read Robinson Crusoe, please. Because the first contact Robinson Crusoe had with a second person on this island was with a, 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 guy, a guy who had no name. He thought he had no name. And he thought who was an adversary, who was an enemy. Friday, as it turned out. He gave the name later on. So it started with a conflict. Uh, and then it became a friendship. So that's what we are all about here. Make the difference. Believe also that diplomacy uh, can work. Uh, and uh, I'm a big fan of Paul Simon. I, I finish with Paul Simon. Not singing, I can't do that. But uh, you may have heard of the song, there are 50 ways to leave your lover. There are 50 ways to leave your lover. Uh, you don't have to read the lyrics. But, but uh, I would ask you, to leave this school in a different way. Leave this school because you're successfully finishing here. Make good use uh, of your, what you learned here and let's stay in contact. Congratulations to all of you. Dear Vice Rector Hitzenberger, dear Ambassador Briggs, uh, dear students, colleagues, uh, friends, and family, uh, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to congratulate you, the 25th MICE class, um, for all the excellent and all the hard work uh, that owned you uh, the MICE degree. Um, this is an important step uh, on the way, and like many of our Previous graduates, you will assume leading positions uh, in politics and international relations, uh, in the business world, uh, civil society. Um, some of you even might open a restaurant. Um, as we heard, it's a good chance uh, to succeed with this uh, at the moment. Um, but uh, at this day of celebration, um, let us not forget that nobody here in this room and that's not all, only for the students, uh, has made it uh, alone. Uh, we are all social beings um, and we all depend very much on those um, who care for us um, and who support us. Preparing uh, for this talk, uh, I can prove this with a short point. Um, the period of parental care in humans uh, is really unique, all right? The next one in line is actually the African elephant. An African elephant raises children about six years. 
So for all the parents in the room, I, I know what's on your mind now. You think that's a piece of cake. Now, uh, six years, but let me tell you, Afri uh, African elephants, they also eat a lot. So after all, it's not such an easy, um, an easy thing. But what this point is really about is um, to thank um, all the parents, all the family, all the friends in the room who supported you on the journey to graduation um, with all the challenges and, of course, with all the choice um, that that involved. Um, you are the 25th MICE class, so it's also a great occasion to thank uh, Vienna University for a quarter of a century of um, outstanding cooperation. Um, I have to admit, and also looking at the festive robes you wear for this um, occasion that merit, of course, the importance of the occasion that sometimes I feel probably graduations have been designed, uh, designed to take place in winter and not on, on hot summer days, but I see you come equipped now <laughs> and uh, it's just, I guess, sending the heat one aspect of the wonderful and very successful cooperation that's so important for the success of this um, program. There's another hallmark um, that we reached today in cooperation with Vienna University that has already been mentioned and that is our first um, joint PhD and um, Corinna, I have to admit, I, I couldn't possibly say all the nice things now that your supervisor, Professor Kornprobst, mentions about you. Um, this also has to do with that um, Professor Rowe uh, doesn't tolerate any speech of a faculty member in more than eight minutes. So that's an additional constraint. Um, but let me say that um, we are all very proud of you um, and uh, we all want to congratulate you very much, um, Karina. Thank you uh, so much for being our trailblazer for hopefully many PhDs to come. We have Colin lining up now and Charlotte, so it, uh, we are well on the way. Um, so congratulations. Um, when I think what makes this MICE um, special, I can think about uh, a great deal of uh, things, um, some of them uh, more appropriate to mention um, than other. Um, but, but really what stands out for me um, is your, your optimism and your engagement. Um, I look, of course, as a social scientist always for definition, so um, according to Winston Churchill, um, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, whereas an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. You started at the DA in the midst of the COVID pandemic and you seize the, the opportunity um, of education. And when then the COVID um, restriction eased, um, you stepped out, even so call you call yourself um, inappropriately, so as we know, um, Zoom generation, um, you stepped out of your Zoom windows, um, you traded your pyjamas for more um, presentable attire, and then uh, you brought back life um, to the Diplomatic Academy. So you not only strived for um, academic excellency, um, but you also make a real investment um, in the social life um, at the DA. So thank you very much on, on behalf of all the faculty, I think, and staff, I can say, for, for making a difference and also for, for always letting us know um, when we still could do better. Um, whilst this is a moment to celebrate, um, let us not forget that um, as we stand here today, um, among our families and, and friends, um, there's war going on within Europe, uh, not so far away from, from where we stand here today. So as we speak, young adults like you, um, they fight in a war that um, nobody of us wanted um, and that defies so many old um, certainties and taken for granted um, beliefs. And as you are told to conquer the professional world, to go out there, our neighbors find uh, their world destroyed. This is not the occasion um, to comment uh, on the tragedy of war, but I think for democracies it's fair to say that it's also not a time for complacency. That good governance, freedom of speech, um, the respect for human rights, things that we take for granted because we we enjoy it so easily, um, they are not um, entitlements, they are um, historic achievements and they also uh, demand and require commitment. Um, I think for the DA this is also a reminder that um, the skills and competences that you gain during your MICE degree are 
more relevant than ever. Um, we know that you have the knowledge and the skills and also the imagination, um, not only to promote your personal career goals and achieve them, but also to um, create and work towards a better future um, for all of us. So let me share two um, observations to support this point. Um, observation one, um, imagination matters. Or as Albert Einstein has put it, logic will get you from A to B. But it's really imagination um, that gets you everywhere. Um, the generation of Konrad Adenauer, de Jasperi and Robert Schumann, um, they brought to life their own imagination um, in European integration and in creating a project for peaceful Europe. And now um, it's up to a new generation um, to design and shape a framework for international relations uh, where things have become increasingly contested, but we also heavily depend um, on international cooperation on issues like uh, climate change. Um, Observation two, um, the DA, of course, it's a competitive um, academic environment and uh, we promote scientific excellence. But that's not really all about um, what the DA is. No, um, the DA is also a microcosm um, where the director and uh, the students and faculty and staff, uh, we all share a common experience. Um, we learn together, we experiment together. Um, and uh, we cooperate a lot. And I think that uh, it's fair to say that um, when uh, Professor Rachwald, who recently left us uh, after 20 years of service for the Diplomatic Academy, when he summarized his experience, he said that um, the best thing about the DA is its students. That's really you know, the closest to his memory from all this time that I think he enjoyed. Um, quite a bit. And I think uh, for all of us, uh, your optimism, your cooperation and your commitment have been um, an inspiration uh, to what uh, for many months appeared like this never-ending shade um, cast by the COVID pandemic and more recently by the war uh, in Ukraine. But as poet uh, Amanda Gorman has put it, um, weathering the storm together is possible. Um, if only one can say that um, that even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. For our graduates, I hope that you will remember the DA as an open place um, and as a place where you grew, both intellectually um, and as a person, uh, probably also as a tennis player, thanks to the initiative of Professor Feldkircher. I wish I could claim this uh, for myself. Um, so um, to sum up, uh, enjoy this day uh, just as you enjoy Thursday nights and the Tipsy Weasel. For those of you who do not know, this is what uh, Ambassador Briggs alluded to, so this special event where later he gets many phone calls from upset neighbors who are desperate to get some sleep. Um, so, um, in this spirit, uh, Ambassador Briggs, I would recommend you keep your phone turned off for a little while. Um, yeah, and in this spirit, I wish you all a wonderful graduation and uh, a wonderful celebration. Thank you so much.
so uh, for the graduation of the first PhD candidate, I go back up to, uh, to this place and switch to the lingua franca of the time of the 14th century when the University of Vienna was, um, was established. It's still Latin for the PhDs. So let's switch to Latin. Doctoranda Clarissima. Examinibus que adiarum que in jure doctores nomen ad que honores consequi student, doctrinam explorandam lege constituta sunt, cum laude superatis, nos adeisti, ut te ono honore quem apediisti in hoc solemni concessor nemus. Set prius fides estanda, te talem semper futuram, qualem te esse jube bedignitas, quam obtinebis et nos speramus de fore. Spondebis igitur, primum. Te huius universitatis in qua sumum in jure gradum ascenderis, piam perpetuum memoriam habituram eusque res äh, rationes quod poteris adjuturam. Dein, honorem eum, quem in te conlatura sum, integrum in columnenque servaturam, neque umquam pravis moribus, et aut vite infamia comaculaturam. Postremo. Doctrinam juris, qua nunc polles, in picro labore culturam et in vite usum et commoda ita conversuram, ut equitas ius juris ac, ac judici, qua saldus civitas continetur, quantum in te est, Usque quaque conservetur. Hec tu ex animi tui sequentia spondebis ec ac policebaris. <lacht> Itaquem nihil impedit, quominus honorem, quem obtina recopis tibi impertiamus. Ergo ego. Regina Hitzenberger, Universitatis Vindobonensis Pro Rector, Promoter Rita, Rite Constituta T, Corinam Ioannam Trestaru, Extrecreto Ordinis Mei Philosophiae Doctorem Creo, Creatam Renuncio Omniaque Juris Doctorum Jura, ec, ac Privilegia in Te Conferro, in Eusque Rem, Rei Fidem Hoc Diploma Universitatis Sigillo, Insignitum tibi in manus strado. We now call the graduates of the 25th MICE program. Oliver Edward George Adcock, United Kingdom. Vasiliki Lydia Andreulaki, Greece.
Flavio Rico Baroffio, Switzerland. Maria Augusta Basan Moigradian, Romania. Roberta Bezzi, Italy. Carla Blazekovic, Croatia. Francesca Magdalena Chapman, United Kingdom, Poland, Luxembourg. <laughs> Michelangelo Chini, Switzerland, Italy. Natalie Clemen, Austria. <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea Daniels, South Africa. Kemran Rachmiev Daudov, Bulgaria. <laughs> Nurhan Deep, Lebanon. Michael Dushanek, Austria. <laughs> Sandra Melissa Edelbacher, Austria. Alexander Benedikt Eherer, Austria. <laughs> Mariam Frangulian, Armenia, Italy. Katharina Fürnkranz, Austria, Portugal. Sandra Ginsberger, Austria. Philippe Gores Claire, Luxembourg.
Median Gruber Austria. Carmen Hagen, Austria. Pia Sophie Hanbuch, Germany. Johanna Hattinger, Austria. <laughs> Pauline Sophie Hennings, Germany. Rory Michael Leonard Hughes, United Kingdom. Tieshi <laughs> Tia, China. Maria Koruk, Belarus. <laughs> Kaspar Friedrich Kleine, Germany. Armin Climenta, Austria. <laughs> Knie Isabel, Austria. Katharina Maria Korner, Austria. <laughs> Jana Krastina, Belarus. Glas Kreuzer, Germany. <laughs> Alexandra Kriegel, Austria. Alberta Quay, Ghana. <laughs> 
Sophie Therese Laza, Austria. Lydia Maria Lina, Austria. Eilan Mechtli, United States of America. Mathieu Olivier Mballa, Cameroon. <laughs> Ellie Ayres McDonald, USA, Australia. Gabriele Melindo, Italy. <laughs> Iris Nadia Meshko, Austria, Ukraine. Alessandra Maria Messner, Germany, Italy. <laughs> Maria Isabel Milheiriso Fontes Cabral Monjadino, Portugal. Maximilian Müller, Austria. <laughs> Natasha Mwala, Kenya. Teresa Neunteufel, Austria. <laughs> Theodor Nicola Golovei, Romania. Eloisa Oliveira Lima de Faria, Brazil. <laughs> Gil Joana Opiela, Germany. Nada Osman, Egypt. <laughs> Andriana Paljusevic, Montenegro.
Alexander Panhofer, Austria. Luca Pechar Pahor, Slovenia. <laughs> Melanie Petrov, Austria. Alexandra Plamadiala, Romania, Moldova. <laughs> Silla Rottensteiner, Austria. Rushanai, Austria, Iran. <laughs> Lea Samonik, Austria. Alexander Szelishansky, Austria. <laughs> Aaron Timo Amir, Schilhan, Austria. Nikolaus Schmidl-Mohl, Austria. <laughs> Schmidt Melina, Germany. Hope Schulz, United Kingdom, Austria. <laughs> Lara Siebrecht, Germany, United Kingdom. Daniel Star Tenorio, Canada, El Salvador. <laughs> Benedikt Stolber, Austria. Marina Stopfer, Russian Federation. <laughs> Katarina Strobel, Austria.
Maria Utkina Russian Federation. Stefania Vélez Soto, Honduras. Mareike Wiederhol, Germany. Fotini Zarogianni, Greece. Good morning, students, dear professors, dear DA staff, dear Jenny. Welcome to Vienna, parents and family. So today we're here to reflect about the last two years here as MICE 2 students at the DA and MICE 1 students. <laughs> Roberta, help me out here. How would you assess our last two years at the DA? Well, Lara, thank you for your question. <laughs> These two years of the DA have been a journey where our laptop screens definitely got the better out of our eyesight. But overall, it has been an incredible experience. At the DA, I really met the most amazing people that I got to call my family and with whom I shared so many experience and hopefully will continue to do so. But I also had classes with incredibly knowledgeable professors who brought to the DA their 
international long-standing expertise. And who can forget about Jenny and the rest of the administration staff who always supported us with constant support over the last two years. And one last mention goes to our DASI. Um, this is the student water representative without whom we wouldn't have gotten as far as we did. So this pretty much sums it all up, Lara. Well, Roberta, it seems like you had quite the blast. Indeed, Lara, <laughs> indeed. So tell me, tell me about, uh, tell me, tell me about the, your highlights, your idea highlights. Tell us. <laughs> well, Roberta, as you already said, we learned a ton of things at the DA and got to interact with some really great professors. But I think what makes the DA so special and so unique are actually all the extracurricular and networking events. Through our student societies, everyone got to pursue academic, fun, or even sporty interests while meeting and connecting with a lot of fellow students. I myself, for example, got to meet some pretty cool people I would not have met without the DA student societies while pursuing some of my own interests. The study trips have also proven to be quite fruitful. From Brussels to the Balkans, the DA provided us practical insights that we will cherish forever. And on top of that, I mean, the DA sponsored us some, with some free chavapi, spaghetti bolognese, an all-inclusive hotel in Montenegro. I mean, what else would you want? <laughs> okay, ragazzi. Sorry, <laughs> Professor Rowe, for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so jokes aside, it has been really quite the ride. It really has been. And at this point, we would like to thank all the professors, the DA staff, friends and family, for your constant support over the last two years throughout our adventure at the Diplomatic Academy. To our peers and fellow students, we all know that you have really bright futures ahead of you and we really can't wait to see where life will take you. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. <laughs> It was a pleasure being your course speakers. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Esteemed Ambassador Briggs, Vice Rector, professors, members of the DA administration, dear friends and family. Okay, ragazzi, so the idea is we're now graduating. <laughs> I wanted to have the least cliche speech of all times, but besides the risk of ending up being super cringe, at the end of the day, we all love a good cry. Plus, my moon is in Pisces, I do get emotional. <laughs> this morning when I woke up and realized we were graduating, this was the first reaction. Shock. <laughs> Shock because in my mind, we're still at intro week of the first year, but then I take my phone, look at the thousands of pictures that I have in my camera roll, and I start believing it. I'm not sure I can call myself Miss Moving On just yet, but Saturn in retrograde will end soon and we can all move, move forward with our lives. Yeah. See you all in September though at the Tipsy. <laughs> Since I've decided to go full-on cliché on you, let's imagine this is the end of a beautiful Netflix movies, and soon the end titles will start scrolling and a super nice montage with the nicest moments would go on with the cheesy soundtrack. Well, we are all main characters after all, and this movie has been a good one. And it's actually one of the few sequels, competing only with High School Musical 2, <laughs> where the second movie, so our second year, was actually better than the first one. I'm not sure if it would be up for an Oscar nomination, but it has my heart completely. Can you believe that one month and a half ago we were in the Balkans singing Himna Generatia and Gas 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 at the top of our lungs while crossing borders? Can you believe that it was only three months ago that we were in Brussels? Can you believe that it has been two years altogether? The MICE program goes strong on interdisciplinarity. Well, I think we all had a chance to experience that. We did not only learn to study economics in a political lens and vice versa, but we all practice interdisciplinarity. When we finished class at 6 and at 6.01 we were already at the tipsy. <laughs> 
Some major skills were also required for all of us who had to go to work at 9 a.m. on Friday morning. Wow. Ah, ragazzi, bear with me. I'm a very nostalgic person. This week had the theme last. The last time we ate lunch, the last time we had breakfast, the last visit to the reading room, the last email sent to Jenny, the last visit to Mr. Netic's office, and the last tipsy. And I'm so happy that it has caused some commotion that both Ambassador Briggs and Professor Mueller have mentioned it. You're welcome. <laughs> My friends asked me not to mention COVID and the pandemic, so I won't dwell on that too much. I feel like it's better that we reminisce on what we gained from these two years than what we lost. However, I wanted to make a little reflection. I was looking at the pictures from the 2019 Biennale in Venice and realized that the slogan was, may you live in interesting times. And I thought, oh wow, is that what made 2020 the way it turned out? Well, jokes on us. We really have been living on interesting times, but I think we wouldn't mind the break, yeah? You know, this made us realize that we don't actually need to live in interesting times, and that a return to normality is what we actually crave for for a very long time. Per aspera ad astra goes the Latin saying, through hard times to the stars. So now let's enjoy it, or as one of my best friends says it, let's genise it. <laughs> a massive thank you to everyone for these two wonderful years. Congratulations, ragazzi, we made it.